Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create custom editor windows. So I was thinking about different topics, different kinds of videos I haven't done yet, and I haven't shown people how to create editor windows, and I think it's actually quite a useful feature. So I'm going to show you how to set up a really easy one where we can change the size of objects or the color or apply a random rotation or whatever, right? Just some fun little tools, and then you guys can take it from there and then use it for whatever you need. But, if you... but of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Beard or Die, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoros Letter, Heidi Zorko, Art Farrell, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or creating a free account over our website and checking it out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. As always, the code and project files for this video will be down below on my GitHub page um, under a repository called Editor Window Tutorial or something along those lines. It'll be the most updated one by the time you see it, probably. And, well, assuming you're watching this video when it comes out. What we want to do is we want to make a window that um, docks and moves around just like this that we can open up like the console and the inspector that's task one and then task two is to actually have some interface on there like buttons and text and then from there we want to actually make those buttons or input fields do something so maybe we have a number and then when we press the button it you know spawns in that many game objects or something you know you, you can do whatever you want with this i don't want to be too specific in how it works i'm going to make some you know very generic basic examples if you've got any questions obviously feel free to ask down below in the comments afterwards um, but yeah i hope you have fun with this and you know make some pretty cool tools with it if you do then you know feel free to uh, at me on twitter or something and show me the tools you've made on your editor extensions but anyway let's get into it so the first thing to do is actually make an editor folder. If you put code in an editor folder, it means that it is actually uh, excluded from the build. And if you have editor scripts included with your build, you can have errors because what happens is it tries to use the like Unity editor namespace and it's not there when you build, so it'll give you errors. You need to make sure it's in an editor folder. Uh, and then we want to create a script for this. Obviously it'll make it a mono behavior, but we'll change it. And we're just gonna call it, um, you know, editor window test or something, right? like so and we're going to go open it up in visual studio so here we are in visual studio i've put it inside the namespace that's not really that important we need to change editor window uh, sorry mono behavior to be editor window that's what i should have said and if you make an editor window that's the well that's the class you have to inherit for an editor window you could go in here and look at what you've got right you've got all these different things to get window and you know, show stuff all these different functions we're not even going to be covering most of these in this video we want to first of all just simply uh show the window so the way we can do that is by making a function to actually show the window, okay? So if we make this a static function, what we can do is we can then add a, an attribute to this method which shows it in the editor. So if you guys are used to using scriptable objects, you have, you know, create asset menu, which is an attribute for a class, and that will allow you to, you know, go into Unity and right click, create, and you can add extra stuff on here. We want to add new windows on here, right? We want to make a new kind of window. So we're gonna do window, but it, it's not here though, it's on the function, okay? So we want, uh, you know, like open window or something. And then it's gonna be a menu item. And the menu item is window. And then whatever we call it, just, you know, test or editor test. So, just from doing that, if we actually go back to Unity and it compiles, you'll actually see we have editor test here, okay? But editor test, it essentially runs the method, but it doesn't actually do anything. We need to write the code to show the window, okay? Um, so to do that, we simply use the get window method in the base class, in the editor window class. Um, and then we have to pass in the type, and the type is actually this type, editor window test, okay? And then we have to actually give the name of the window. Um, well, we don't have to, obviously, that's just one of the options, but we're gonna name the window editor test, okay? So that would be whatever your window's called, inspector, console, all that, lot, right? So if we do that and we go back over to Unity, window, editor test, we actually get a window here called editor test, okay? That's step one, you can obviously dock it and stuff. Let's go into step two. So step two is actually rendering something. So the function that handles rendering is called on GUI. Okay, you might have used this before. And inside here, we actually want to use GUI labels and buttons and stuff like that to actually render stuff. Now, uh, it depends on what you need, right? Maybe your window has some explanation on how it works, but to be honest, most of the time, you're just gonna have the buttons and input fields that you need. So if you actually go on here and search uh, GUI layout, the GUI layout class actually has, oops, sorry, GUI layout has all these functions to do the different things you need, right, on a GUI. So you can have, um, I mean, I don't know what all of these do, but as you can tell, label is just some text. 
you've got uh, areas for um, rendering a rec a rect or a rectangle essentially boxes buttons um, sliders you know whatever you need it's all here right okay I'm sure there are other add-ons you can get on unity that allow you to render other things and you know you can modify this as well but what we want is we want to say uh, for example a label and in here all we want to do is uh, even though there's loads of settings and different parameters we can do we, we just want to say some text right welcome to my editor window okay so this means every frame it's essentially an update frame but for the GUI so whenever the GUI re-renders it will render a label like this we go back over here it is welcome to my editor window okay we'll stick that there and then next, for example, we want to add a button and we're going to use this button to rotate the object, right? So we're going to apply a random rotation to a selected object. So to do a button, you, well, you can just do a GUI layout dot button. Okay. And then you inside here can say what the button text is. So we'll say, um, you know, rotate or random apply random rotation like so. We go back, give it a second to do its thing. We've got this button and you can click it, but it doesn't do anything, right? Now, yeah, you can, you can uh, set scaling and positioning and everything. I'm not gonna worry about that. So we can apply a random, apply a random rotation, but that does nothing. Now, um, notice how this is on every frame, right? So a button is essentially an input and it has a ball, remember it returns ball. And by returning ball, when it returns true, it means they've pressed the button. You might want to do something whenever they're not pressing the button. The chances are you don't want to do that. But regardless, we want to say if button, which means if that button is pressed this frame or this uh, update of the, the UI, then we want to you know do something. So we can even say like debug.log high, right? If we debug.log high, whenever they press the button, maybe that's what you want to do. It's up to you, right? If we go console and we press it, it logs high. But we don't want to log high. What do we want to do? We want to apply a random rotation to the selected object. So what we actually want to do is if we say selection, so selection is a static class um, and there's all these different things in here. Active object is, um, well, sorry. So game, if we search uh, game, active game object is the active game object as if there is actually, if there is an active game object, right? Obviously that can actually be null if you haven't got anything selected. So let's say we want to apply it to that. We want to say, um, var selected object equals this okay so we've got the selected object and then we want to say um selected object dot try get component let's say well actually no every object has to have a transform so we don't have to bother with that we're just going to say transform dot rotate we want to rotate it okay um and we can just pass in some random values for the rotation right we can just say um random dot range between and then, I don't know, minus, actually, let's say uh, transform.rotation is equal to a new quaternion or a new uh, quaternion.euler. And then for the x, y, and z, we'll say uh, random.range minus 360 degrees. Uh, 360 degrees okay and then we'll copy copy that so if we look here now we're gonna apply a random rotation I'm, I'm not even gonna bother sorting out the uh, brackets here it's gonna apply a random rotation to the selected object when we press the button let's go give it a go so if I just press the button there's a null reference error because we haven't got anything selected yeah I'll, I should probably catch that case um, but if I select the cube and then press apply random rotation that's what it did, right? It's now applying a random rotation to the object in the scene. Now, obviously that's just a really simple example, but the point is it works. And the thing is, if I add another cube or a sphere or something and just chuck that to the side, obviously if I select both, it's only gonna do it to this because I said do it to the selected one, which is um, the one I selected first. If I go the other way around, it'll now do it to the sphere, though you won't be able to see because it's a sphere, that's probably not a good example. Uh, let's actually just make two cubes. So this cube can be over here. Okay, if you select them both, it just does it to that one. If you want to do it to both of the cubes, you then have to actually loop over the selected game objects. So we can actually say uh, here for each var um, 
selected object in selection dot uh, dot game objects. So that's all the things you've got selected, which means actually yes, you can loop it without checking for null because um, it just won't loop if there are no elements in that list. So if I just apply normally uh, without anything, no errors, just nothing happens. But if I select these two, it does this. And if I select the light, the lighting source also rotates. I can select all three. I can even select the camera. So obviously most of the time I rotate, the camera is not even going to see them because it's rotated somewhere random. Let's rotate that back and just reset this. Actually, no, that's usually at something else, but it's fine. Um, the actual camera should be rotated probably down a little bit so we can see those. But you get the point, right? Now we can apply random rotation. Let's uh, do one of the little things to end off with then. Let's go make another little button. So we'll say if uh, GUI layout dot button, and this button is going to be uh, a scale button. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll have a, uh, we want to have an input. So what we can do is at the top, we can just say here, serialize field private float scale. Okay. And what we want is we want to say when they press the button, uh, go over these objects and say set that scale. Um, transform dot scale equal to uh, a new vector free with each component being scale, 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 or even I could just do vector free. Uh, dot one times scale. That's a nicer way to do it. Um, but it's a, it's a read only. So we do this one. Now if we go back here and select these two. Um, oh wait, sorry. No, I need to actually. So after having this, let's make this not serialized field. We need to add an actual button or sorry, a label here above the button. So we want to say scale is equal to, and then we want uh, the editor GUI layout. And there's a, you can have fields for different things. We want a float field, okay? And then we're gonna name the float field scale and it's gonna be bound to scale. Oh, that's, well, yeah, that, that's the uh, value. Okay, so you know how the scale is one, 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 and the scale is one, one, one. Let's uh, select both of these and we'll set scale to zero. We'll set scale to two, one, okay. Now, obviously some people might be saying, well, this is pointless because you can just multi-select and do it. And yeah, I agree. Um, technically one benefit to this is you don't have to uh, go through and set all three, but even then it's really quick to do. This is just an example how you can take some value of input and press a button and it does something to those objects, right? So from this, I hope you guys come up with some good ideas of what you can do. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask any questions down below. Uh, keep in mind, I haven't used every possible thing in this. It's just, I know at least how to um, use it. And from here, you know, it's just your imagination, right? What do you need? What tools do you need? You can develop tools with this. You can do literally anything, right? You can access what's selected. You can even do that with, for example, like scriptable objects. I think you can um, get data off them and stuff like that. You, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. Let me know how this goes. Let me know down below. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.